I was talking to my producer in the break, and I said, what's so ironic about having Stephen on the program right now was you were there speaking with uh, my colleague Jen Burke about another issue in the United States. This then unfolded. So take me back to that moment and, and couple that with what you're hearing, what we're hearing now from Donald Trump, um, your perspective, your view. Yeah, we were doing a live conversation just like this when the Capitol was overrun on January 6th. And um, I remember at the time talking about how astonishing it was that something like this would happen because we had had 200 years of peaceful transfer of power in the United States. Even when we had our Civil War, uh, there was no question that Abraham Lincoln won the election of 1860. It was just a debate on the Confederate side about whether they wanted to remain in the country with Lincoln as president. Um, and so this is really extraordinary. And what we're seeing in the more recent hearings that look back at this is as damaging and as threatening as we thought it was at the moment, it turns out it was much, much worse than it appeared even as unpleasant as it was on January 6th. You now know that there was a significant paramilitary effort that was trying to uh, run this operation, that the effort to uh, to hang Mike Pence, that the movement was trying to do to get him to uh, follow uh, President Trump's you know, insistence that the election be canceled. Uh, the uh, reality here uh, is really much, much worse now than it was then. It's just astonishing um, how much organization took place and how close we came. Uh, one estimate, 40 feet from disaster. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. And as you say, the, the more and more information that's being revealed at the hearings, um, certainly raising a number, a number of eyebrows, certainly shocking a number of people. But the division within the United States still remains on this, Stephen. Well, that's right. I mean, there is there's no real uh, likelihood that a lot of Trump supporters, people who still support Trump at this point, are going to have their minds changed by these hearings. But what this can do is really galvanize uh, the case that the prosecutors want to make, strengthen the effort that the prosecutors are going to have, because ultimately uh, the evidence is the evidence. You have um, a half a dozen of these proud boys who are now in jail awaiting trial or cooperating with prosecutors. Um, you had uh, one of the top investigators on this committee, Congressman Raskin of Maryland, talking about about how uh, they have links that very clearly draw Trump to those Proud Boys uh, that is going to be revealed in the hearings to come. And so uh, the question is not whether what people feel mm -hmm. is a matter to be resolved. It's rather what the evidence shows, because public opinion does not determine prosecution, does not determine conviction. That's going to be based much more on the evidence than the framing of the former president or others. What about on the political front? Who's going to be representative, of course, the House of Representatives, the Senate, the Congress? We know the midterm is coming up in November. This being the first time we've heard from former President Donald Trump on this, of course, referring to the hearings as a, you know, horrific situation, saying it's a waste of people's time. Um, can he have that influence still? Well, I do think that he remains the dominant voice in the Republican Party. Now, he talked, for example, in the clip that you just played about this being a very partisan hearing. Mm -hmm. And he's right. Nearly every person who has a partisan identification or partisan loyalty who has testified is, in fact, a Republican, uh, including uh, people very close to the president, people appointed uh, to the president's administration. We know that Vice President Pence disagreed with Trump. Of course, that was very publicly known at the time. We know the attorney general, Bob Barr, uh, he also uh, objected to this. We now know that the president's counsel, his top lawyers, people at the center of the campaign, even his data experts, all of them said there was no evidence to support the claim that the election was being stolen. They told the president what he was doing was illegal. He did it anyway. And that is why the president is facing a world of political jeopardy and why he's trying so desperately at these campaign events, because that's what they really are, mm -hmm. to save his own skin. We know things resume on Tuesday. We'll certainly be watching very closely. Stephen, always appreciate you giving us your time here on CTV News Channel. Stephen Farnsworth, political science professor at the University of Mary Washington.